Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. Um, what I do is I rebuild boat engines and uh, well, I rebuild LX, LS engines, but I also rebuild boat engines also. So um, anybody, there's a lot of videos on YouTube where people are building engines, boat engines, LS engines, whatever, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, but the real uh, trick to, uh, especially with boat engines, is figuring out what went wrong with it in the first place so that when you put it back together, it won't happen again. Um, so I want to give an example of that and in this uh, video I'm showing a, a Vortec V6 engine that uh, basically had about seven gallons of oil and water mix in the engine and it was basically puking oil and water mix out the top of it running down the river. Um, so when I tore it apart I didn't, really, I didn't find anything obvious. I didn't find any cracks in the block on the outside. I didn't see any uh, cracks and exhaust manifold would cause this problem. So I was really a little bit dumbfounded as to what was really the problem. But once we got the engine apart, we found the source of the water. Uh, matter of fact, I'll show you. That's what the that's what came out of this engine. Now that stuff may look harmless, but that's got the consistency of a pancake batter. So it doesn't flow well, and it makes a nasty mess. It gets it's very sticky and gets everywhere. And that's a mixture of oil and water. The oil was almost brand new because this particular customer had just changed his oil. And uh, it, it just made a huge mess in his engine. Um, I have another video on how I can separate the water and oil from that mixture right there. Um, you can't do it uh, by just letting it sit there. It won't, it won't separate just sitting around. So I found a trick to doing that, which I'll do in another video. But for now, uh, like I said, I found the source of the water. And so what we found, we took the, uh, this is piston number, this is the front of the engine. So this is one, three, and five. So this is number three. So what we found, if you look right down there, there's a crack running right across there. Let me see if I can adjust this light a little bit. There we go, right there. So if you look at the tip of my finger, you see a crack running right across there. And then up there on the top, or rather inside, you can see a crack running longitudinally down through there and then over here. You see it really good right there. There's a crack right in there. Let me back it out a little bit. So come bring that light this way. There you go. So you can see that crack real easy right there. So the bottom line is that, um, so the crack is the source of water. But then you got to say, well, what caused the crack? Well, when you look at the piston, let me take you over and look at this piston. We get my seven foot sun out of the way. So this is number three piston. So when I show it to you, you can say, okay, that caused the crack. So it's missing the skirt on that side and it's missing the skirt on that side. That's piston number three. So then like, okay, well, what caused that? That's kind of unusual too. Well, if you look at the rest of the pistons, severe scoring on that one. I'm not, I'm not sure which number this was. Um, I remember number one and number two, I think, didn't have any didn't have any scoring, but that's severe scoring on that piston. So on both sides. Um, actually, let's see. I think that was number. I'm not sure what what. Hold on. So this is done. This one doesn't have any. Yeah, there's scoring on that side. There you go. So I want to show you everyone. The bottom line is four of these six pistons had severe scoring on the sides. There's also a severe scoring on the walls of the, the block elsewhere, which you can't see anymore because it's got rust, but anyway. Um, so the bottom line is that this engine has been rebuilt before. The bearings were 10,000 undersize. Uh, the screws that I just used to pull out, um, these screws came out, that's what was holding the balance shaft in. Those are not factory screws. So the bottom line is this engine has been re rebuilt before and it was a crap rebuild. It was a very poor rebuild. They, they didn't leave enough clearance in the cylinders. Um, the, uh, I had the uh, valves, oh, excuse me, the uh, cylinder heads taken to a machine shop and they had said the valves were already oversized because the guys were worn out and they put new, they put new oversized valve stems with valves in the heads, but they did not machine the guide, so they just messed them up even more. So to repair those heads, it was gonna be $500 and I told them forget it, I was just source another set. So the, the general consensus and the overall picture of this engine was it was rebuilt before and it was rebuilt in a very shoddy manner. And that's what caused the, caused the failure. So 
the owner report, one of the things he asked me to look at was the carburetor because he said, well, the thing's never really run right since he owned it. Well, no wonder. Um, it wasn't the carburetor, it was the engine was a piece of crap. So this example of where you can't see from the outside what was wrong with it, but internally this thing was eating itself alive and it finally just kind of grenaded and chewed that piston up and uh, sucked along a lot of water once it cracked this particular cylinder. So this one was a... Uh, like I said, it was hard to diagnose on the outside, but because there's no obvious cracks in the in here or anywhere else that water where water would get into the engine. But when I got into the cylinder, I found it. So this is one of those cases where um, it, it, the reason I'm in business, I try to I build each engine from scratch one at a time. I try to build them very um, uh, with a lot of quality and make sure I'm using the right parts and right clearances and all that. And, uh, and I take my time going through them and, and plastic gauge everything, make sure every, all the, the tolerances are right. Um, if you get an engine, a rebuilt engine from a, I call them an engine farm, like maybe, I don't know, I'm not gonna say any names, but I know a few. Um, if you get a rebuilt engine, a, a short block or long block, long block from an engine farm, um, this may be what you get. Um, as a matter of fact, this thing has got a serial number tag on it somewhere. Um, there it is right there remanufactured part and they didn't put their name on it so that tells you something right there um yeah it's remanufactured all right uh maybe brazil i don't know but anyway i don't, I don't know that brazil does things bad or not so um bottom line is uh the uh there's an art to doing this and that's to find what went wrong with the engine the before you or as you're tearing it down so that when you build it back up you build it better than it was before, or at least you found the problem and you know what to do to, so it won't happen again. Um, so I've got another, I've got a 3.0 liter that I've already done, I've done a video on it about how it uh, knocked a hole in the side of the block. That was an obvious problem, but you really, that's not the root cause. The root cause is something causing the rod to let go and knock the hole in the block. So. That's the engine we're about to tear down now, and uh, I'm not going to put any videos up on that until the end of March because I have a contest to uh, let people uh, email me the, what they think happened to it. And uh, once the end of March, uh, at the uh, once April arrives, I'll start posting those videos, and we'll see what happens to that one. So thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching for my videos and uh, the, the diagnosis of what went wrong with these engines. Good night.